everyone. Um, so we've got another minute to go. Um, so while people are getting logged on, um, I just wanted to say hello. And I wanted to make sure that everyone can hear me well and see my screen. So I'm just going to flip through the first couple of slides. Um, and if you could just let me know if you can see me and hear me um, in the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, that would be a huge help. All right, thank you, Debbie. Um, it looks like everybody can see and hear me, so that's good news. And it is just about three o'clock um, on Eastern time. It's two o'clock Central time. Um, I'm on Eastern time, um, so we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on Giving Day Strategy for Give Big St. Croix Valley. Um, I'm really excited to get into this webinar because we covered in our last webinar some of the basics of using the Mighty Cause platform and getting set up. And on this webinar, we're really going to dig into the Giving Day Strategy that will help you meet your fundraising goals and be successful. My name is Linda Gerhardt. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. Um, and my job at Mighty Cause is mostly marketing, but I also manage giving events. This is my second year uh, managing uh, Give Big St. Croix Valley on the Mighty Cause side. So I manage putting the site together and working with the United Way of St. Croix Valley to get the event ready for you. Um, and last year we saw some really great results. I know we've got some new nonprofits and some new communities participating this year. So I'm just really excited excited to see how this event goes. I'm sure it'll be great. I'm hoping that we'll see some good growth here. Um, so before we dive in, I wanted to quickly go over the agenda for today's webinar. Um, first, we'll go over the basics of how Give Big St. Croix Valley works. So if you missed our first webinar or just need a little refresher, no worries. You'll know everything you need to know by the end of this webinar. Um, and then we'll move into um, how to run a successful Giving Day campaign, how to promote your campaign and get donations. And after that, we're going to move into prize strategy. Um, and we'll be doing a q and a session at the end of the webinar and I will be joined uh, by Sarah from United Way St. Croix Valley um, and just as a bit of housekeeping since we're doing the Q&A at the end of the webinar if you have a question um, that you think of while I'm presenting just go ahead and type that into the questions box of your go-to webinar panel and then when we get to that portion of the presentation we'll make sure to answer your question all right, and with all of that housekeeping out of the way, we'll jump right into Giving Day Basics. Give Big St. Croix Valley is a giving event that takes place on Tuesday, April 30th, which is the final Tuesday of the month. Um, it begins on midnight on April 30th, and the event goes from midnight to midnight. So as soon as the clock strikes 12 and the calendar turns over to April 30th, the event begins. Um, St. Give Big St. Croix Valley is hosted by United Way St. Croix Valley, and it's a 24-hour online giving marathon. So your goal as a participant in the event is to raise as much money as you possibly can for your organization during those 24 hours. And if you bring in donations, you'll also have the opportunity to win some prizes, um, which we'll go over a little bit later on in the presentation in a bit more detail. Um, an important thing to note here is that donations are actually open for Give Big. They opened on March 1st. So at this point, you can now accept donations for your nonprofit, and all of those donations count towards your Give Big St. Croix Valley totals. The first thing you need to do if you participate and give big is register your nonprofit. Registration is still open, but it will be closing in the near future. So if you are on this webinar and you have not already registered, please go to givebigscv.org and take a few moments to fill out the form and get registered. Um, you can absolutely open up a tab in your browser and do it while I'm presenting. I promise it won't hurt my feelings because I would much rather lose your attention for a minute or two than to have to tell you that you can't participate because you didn't register. Um, so it's a really short form that you need to fill out and you do need to sign up for a Mighty Cause account before you can register. Um, there is a $100 registration fee, which just helps the United Way cover some of the cost of running the event. And if you haven't paid that yet, either Sarah will hunt you down or you can just check your email for the link or just mail in a check to the address that's listed on the registration form. Um, that's just to help them defray some of the costs of running this event. Um, approval is a very quick process and most people get approved on the same day they register and once you're registered you can add other administrators for your page 
right on your settings page. So it's a very simple, easy process. If you have any questions or problems, you can always reach out to me or reach out to Sarah or reach out to our support team here at Mighty Cause and we'll help you out. But this is the most important step because it lets us know that you want to participate. Um, so take care of that if you haven't already done so. Um, and if you need to register right now, go ahead and do it right now while we're on this webinar and you're thinking about it. On the Gift Big site, there is a nonprofit toolkit that I highly recommend visiting, bookmarking, and getting familiar with. Um, in it, you can view past trainings, and that's where this training will be um, once we're done with the presentation. If you wanted to show it to volunteers or staff members who are helping with the Giving Day, um, there are also documents you can download that have tips, how to's, there's a timeline, um, lots of great stuff to help you get ready for the big day. There's social media and email templates and logos, and just all sorts of helpful goodies. Um, Sarah worked really hard to help get this put together, so please take advantage of it. Um, if you haven't checked it out yet, please go to givebigscv.org and just take a look at everything that's offered there because it'll be a huge help to you as you're planning this campaign. And as you can see um, uh, on the bottom of this slide, you can see where it's located. It's under resources. Just click on resources and then click NPO toolkit from the little drop down menu that appears. All right, so now we're going to move on to campaign strategy. Um, what I'm going to do is walk you through the pillars of a successful Giving Day campaign. So you can take what's useful to you and doable for your nonprofit size and capacity and work well, come up with a personalized strategy that works well for your nonprofit. Um, so we talked about this a lot on our last webinar, um, but your organization's profile is really the face of your nonprofit during Give Big St. Croix Valley. So it's basically the foundation of your campaign. It's what you're building your campaign around. Um, this is the page that you'll be sharing with donors, and it's what you'll use to tell your nonprofit story. So customizing this page and making it look really sharp um, is one of the first things you should do after you get registered. Um, on your page, you can add your logo, change the color to reflect your nonprofit's branding, add images and videos and graphics, and really make this page feel like an extension of your nonprofit. Um, you can also set a fundraising goal that will add a progress bar that allows you and also your supporters to track how you're doing and how close you are to your fundraising goal. The centerpiece of your page is your story, which is where you'll put your nonprofit's mission statement, talk about what you do, how you're part of the St. Croix Valley community and what you do to benefit residents, and make, make the case for why people should donate to your organization. Um, this is also where you can add some images, a campaign video, links, and really just represent your organization and discuss your work. Um, so before you even think about social media strategy or start drafting email blasts, um, really take some time to get familiar with this page and make sure that your profile really represents your nonprofit well because this is what most people will see when they come to your page to make a donation. Um, so if you need any help figuring out how to edit your page or if you have a question about whether you can do something on your page, our support team is here to help you and guide you. So you can always email us at support at mightycause.com and we'll walk you through whatever you are trying to do and make sure that you have your page looking the way you want um, for Give Big St. Croix Valley. Another foundation of your campaign strategy is what we call your donor experience, um, which hits donors at a key point, and that's obviously when they're making their donation. Um, we, I know we talked about this a bit in our last webinar, but there's a lot you can do with this tool, which you can access from your Mighty Cause Manager or your dashboard when you're on your nonprofit's page. Um, but there are three main things that are important to set in place for your giving day. Uh, the first is using custom donation suggestions. These are four amounts that you can choose to display in the window that pops up when someone clicks to donate. This is a really crucial moment because this is when donors are choosing how much to give. So you have the opportunity to suggest amounts that are meaningful to your nonprofit and help you make the case for giving these amounts. Um, as a best practice, it's a good idea to keep these suggestions reasonable um, with a relatively low entry point. Um, so have an approachable amount to start out with. Most donors are not going to give at the $100 or $200 level. That's just not how most people give 
to charities, um, but you want to start out with something that feels doable to the average person. You can also look at what the average donation is for your nonprofit to sort of figure out what a, an appropriate amount is. Um, by default on Mighty Cause, you'll see $25, $50, $50 $75 and $100 populated in that donation window, but I highly recommend changing these amounts to numbers that are meaningful to your nonprofit. Um, you can also add a description of what that amount provides to help bump people toward donating at those levels. A best practice here is to tie the donation amount to a real world service or item that your nonprofit provides. Um, that just provides a more uh, do satisfying donation experience for most people because as we all know, people like to donate things. They like to think about something that they're donating being used in a particular way. These aren't promises, but this helps them conceptualize what the monetary donation helps your nonprofit do. So for instance, let's say you're an animal shelter, and I'm making these numbers up here, so please don't think that these are actual numbers, but $15 might buy one rabies vaccine for a dog, and $35 might pay for enough food to feed your whole cat room for a week, and $100 might help you care for one animal for their entire stay. Um, so these kinds of descriptions help donors connect the amounts you're asking for and to real items and services that you provide to the people or the animals or whoever you serve, and they drive home what kind of work you do. So they help reinforce the message that's all over your page, that's in your story, so that when they're making that decision, when they're at, they're at that critical point and going, how much should I give? How much do I want to give to this organization? You're really reinforcing what your nonprofit does in your community. Um, you can leave those blank, um, but I strongly recommend utilizing the donation suggestions and descriptions and tying them into the campaign you're running. So for instance, if you know this is your 50th year um, in operation and you were really going to capitalize on that for your Give Big campaign, um, you can, you know, have everything go up in uh, numbers increments of 50 to help drive home that message that this is your 50th year of serving the St. Croix Valley or whatever that is. So just Pick some numbers that are meaningful to your nonprofit. It's not necessarily the numbers, it's the descriptions and how you can connect those back to your cause that will make this an effective use of this tool. All right, so as I mentioned before, um, donations for Give Big St. Croix Valley are already open, and getting those early donations is a great way to get a head start and build momentum for your campaign. And just to be totally clear, these are not pledges, these are donations that process immediately. They just count toward your totals for the giving event. So not only can these help you rank higher on the leaderboard, which we'll get to in a minute, um, and get a jump on the competition for the unique donors prize, which we'll also get to in a minute, um, it'll help you get some seed donations. Um, and seed donations um, are donations from supporters of your nonprofit that help you break the ice with other donors. Um, people generally feel more comfortable donating to online campaigns when they see that others have donated too. That's why we call them seed donations because they help the overall amount of your donations grow. Um, so you can ask your sustaining donors, staff, volunteers, anyone you know is likely to support your campaign because they already support you, they're you know in your inner circle, just ask them to make an early donation. Um, it'll basically just give you a boost and by asking a smaller selective group of people in your inner circle, those people who have shown up to support you and you can count on their support, you don't run the risk of tapping out your donor base too early. Obviously, you want to go hard on April 30th, but you can also tap your inner circle to get those early donations now to set yourself up for success on April 30th. So in terms of tried and true fundraising techniques that we have seen work wonders on giving days, there's really nothing quite like matching grants. Um, and a matching grant is basically just a large donation that you leverage to entice other donors to give. Um, when you have a matching grant, you're offering to match each donation for a certain period of time, um, perhaps for a certain amount, um, and that helps generate interest and urgency. Um, people can very easily get an email saying, donate now, and they'll go, ah, you know, I'll give on Friday when I get paid or I'll give at the beginning of next month. Um, but that makes it a lot harder for people to 
dismiss the email and say, I'll do it later when they have the opportunity basically to multiply their money and give more because you've offered a matching grant. Um, so on Mighty Cause, you can enter the grant onto your page in the donation section of your dashboard um, and set it for any do duration that you'd like. You can also backdate it. You can set them successive if you have multiple matching grants. There's a lot you can do with our matching grants tool. Um, so there is a support article that you may want to take a look at in our support library that will help walk you through the different functions of that tool. Um, but our matching grants tool will calculate the grant for you and put a sticker over over your donate button so that everybody who goes to your page and sees the donate button knows that you have this match available. So that's all well and good, but the question you may have right now is, how do I get a matching grant? Um, and you basically can follow a three-step process to get a matching grant. Um, first, much like you would do with major gift prospects, um, you prospect, which means finding candidates that might be able to provide a matching grant. Um, good prospects for matching grants are usually board members, major gift donors, sponsors you've worked with in the past, local businesses you have a relationship in, with, 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 and so on. Um, you know, you basically want to look to your inner circle, people who can give in larger amounts and people who, who have shown that they like to give to your organization and they can be counted on to do so. Um, so make a list of prospects. Um, when you're considering a matching grant, I recommend starting a spreadsheet with your prospects where you can keep track of important information and log your conversations with them. So then after you've got your prospects together, you'll start the cultivation process, um, which basically means breaking the ice with them and starting that conversation. Um, we definitely recommend with, uh, with matching grants prospects, reaching out personally with a phone call, a personalized email, or even requesting to set up an in-person meeting, um, just because these are larger donors who are giving in larger amounts. Um, so you want to make that as personal as possible, and you want to work on building that relationship with them, um, because that's how that process tends to work. People don't generally, you know, if you're an anonymous person and they speak to a different person every time, they're not going to be as likely to give, but if you build that relationship with one person, um, they're more likely to want to provide a matching grant for you. Um, and then you just make your ask. Um, now, this generally works best if you leave it somewhat open and allow the grantor to steer the conversation about how much to give. Um, smaller matching grants, like $500, and even less than that have been enough to successfully drive donations, especially if the grant is active for a short period of time. Like if you had a smaller grant, you could run it for an hour. Um, you can also post multiple matches at one time or have them go live at certain times. So if you're able to secure your multiple smaller matches, you can either post them separately for little fundraising sprints or bundle them together. Um, and if you are able to secure a larger matching grant, you can, you know, maybe stretch that until for the entire duration of the giving event. So how you want to use it is really up to you and what the size of the grant and your relationship with the grantor. The tool will pretty much allow you to operate your matching grant in any way you wish. There's a lot of options there and a lot of flexibility. So if you're able to if you're thinking about a matching grant, and I definitely recommend it, there's still enough time. We, we're, you know, more than a month out, so you still can, you know, start that conversation and work on securing that matching grant. Also, just take a look at the tool. It's in the donation section of your dashboard where you would find your donation report, and you just click on uh, matching grants from the submenu, and you'll be able to take a look at that tool and explore what it can do. So once you've got the match, you need to add it to your, your page and the Give Big site. Um, and you'll also want to promote it on social media, in emails and elsewhere, because like the proverbial tree that falls in the forest, a matching grant that nobody knows about, you know, doesn't actually work. So you'll need to, um, you know, hit your, pro your social media accounts, promote it in emails so that people know that this is available to them, that they have the chance to double their donation or however you want to phrase it to them. Let them know that it's there and that you're looking for them to donate on this specific date and time um, by publicizing it and making them you know, well aware that they have this opportunity to make their donation go further. And you can see um, there's a little bit of a screenshot of the uh, matching grants tool. You can see when one is live, um, that's, uh, you know, all there for you. The tool is, is easy to use, um, but if you have any questions about queuing up a matching grant or entering it, you can certainly email support and we'll help you work through that. 
So moving on to another strategy that's a proven success for giving days is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising deputizes your existing supporters to fundraise on your behalf. Um, they can create a page on Mighty Cause and ask people they know to donate to their page. Um, and there's a few reasons why this is an effective strategy. Um, and the main thing about it is donor acquisition. Um, one of the great things about an event like Give Big St. Croix Valley is that the visibility of the overall event and the work that United Way puts into promoting it can help you pick up some new donors and help you reach new people. And you can amplify that, amplify that even further by using peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. And that's because while well, you don't have access to your followers and supporters, family members and friends so that you can ask them to donate and you tell them about your campaign, they do have that access. So they can go to this crop of people your nonprofit may never have had any contact with and may not have permission to contact and spread the word about your work and your message and ask them to donate to your campaign. So it really is a powerful tool. You're reaching new people and you're getting donations on a day when you know the reach that you have is critical to your success. Now, when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, you need to ask people to do it. Sometimes they prop up, crop up of their own accord. People just start fundraisers. But for a giving day, um, you typically need to ask them. Um, you can do this personally if you have people in mind who might be a good fit for this, um, if they have a large social network. Um, but you can also put out a call on social media or email asking people to fundraise for you. Um, it can also be a really great, fun way for people who may not have that much money on their own to give, um, to still get involved and raise funds for your organization and help. Since it's free for them to do, they are not donating their own money. They're basically donating their time and their social network. Um, so volunteers and staff members are definitely worth tapping for peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. And again, your board, it's worth asking them, hey, can you create a fundraiser for us so that we can reach more people and get more donations on April 30th. Um, for board members, it's usually part of their responsibility to fundraise for you and help you in that aspect of running your organization. So don't be afraid to, you know, at your next board meeting, see if you can generate some interest or even get your entire board together as a whole. Um, and on that note, um, if you've had peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers before or you're just comfortable with the, the concept of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and you really want to kick it up a notch, you can consider use, utilizing event and team fundraising, um, particularly if you'd like to get a group of people involved, like your entire board, as we were talking about local businesses and so on. Um, event and team fundraising allows them to work together and fundraise as a group for a common goal. Um, and it also adds additional layers of competition because team pages and event pages have their own leaderboard. So it's totally separate from the leaderboard for the giving event. But if they want to you know, compete with each other to see who can raise the most money for your, your cause, they can do that on a team page or an event page. Um, which one you want to choose just kind of depends on the complexity that you're looking for. Um, but that can be a really great way to ratchet up the competition and to raise more, to get people motivating each other and allowing that friendly competition to get them to raise more money for your organization. Um, so it may not be a great thing to try out if this is your first year, or you're not really that comfortable with online fundraising. But again, if you're an experienced fundraiser and you've participated before and you've had peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers before, this can be a really great way to just bump things up a notch and take it even further so that you can raise more money on April 30th. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so now we're going to shift gears a little bit and go into how to promote your campaign. Um, one of the most important avenues you have to promote your campaign is your email list. Um, so make sure you've got emails scheduled, that you have a plan. Um, we recommend keeping your emails pretty short and sweet and easy to read um, with a clear call to action. Most people are busy. They just kind of skim emails for the bullet points. So make sure that your email you know, communicates what you want but is also something that people can easily skim to find the most important information. And we also recommend a clear call to action, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, segmenting your emails is also a best practice. Um, it kind of depends on the, the size of your email 
list if you have you know a very small email list that may not be realistic um, but if you have a larger email list with different types of donors um, we definitely recommend segmenting and what that means is splitting your email contacts into groups based on what they have in common like volunteers recurring donors board members, and so on. Um, so you can talk more specifically to who these donors are and the relationships they have with your nonprofit, which means they will be more likely to click on your email, read it, and make a donation. Um, people generally like it when you talk to them specifically and acknowledge who they are. Obviously, if you have a volunteer who comes in every week and they get an email that doesn't acknowledge that, that's not a great experience for that volunteer. So segmenting your emails is something you can do through pretty much every email marketing service whether you use constant contact or MailChimp um, that is something that you should be you know aware of doing or try to do just so that you're talking specifically to these important groups of donors instead of blasting things out to everyone um, obviously a few blast emails like when the event begins when you start you know sending emails for donations and they don't have any specific messaging toward particular donors those are fine to send blast emails it, i'm not saying blast emails are bad um, but you definitely want to take some extra time and care with some of these segments that are really key uh, supporters of your organization um, definitely schedule your emails ahead of time and think about the timing. Um, you want to send out some email reminders before the event um, explaining, hey, Give Big St. Croix Valley is coming up on April 30th. This is what this event is. This is why we're participating. And here's what we're looking to achieve. Here's where you can donate. Um, and if you haven't already done so, you can send a notice that donations are now open. Um, and just be strategic about when you send these throughout the day. Um, you know, obviously, not a lot of people are going to be checking their email at 2 a.m., even though people are making donations incredibly at that hour. Um, but, you know, you want to think about when people are getting up, when they're sitting down to look at their emails, um, when they get off of work and are maybe checking their phones for their personal email. So think about, you know, key times when you want to hit your audience and make those emails, you know, really pop out and be at the front, the top of their inbox. Um, make sure to choose a mobile friendly template in your email marketing software because most of your donors these days are going to be checking their emails from their phones. Um, so if your email only looks right on a desktop and it looks crazy on a smartphone, they're probably not going to click through that email. So you want to make sure that it looks good on mobile devices as well as on desktop, um, especially in nonprofit environments, we can sort of work from a desktop and forget that the average person is looking at their phone to read their emails in a lot of cases. Um, so just make sure that you, when you're going through and choosing a template to create your emails, that it is mobile friendly. Um, and on that note, uh, Mighty Cause is mobile responsive, so the Give Big site is mobile responsive. It can tell what kind of device you're using to access it. So it'll look good on a mobile phone, your page will look good on a mobile phone, a, a tablet, whatever you happen to be using. Um, just make sure that your emails are also mobile friendly. And I can't stress this enough, um, test your emails before you send them. And when I say test them, I mean have several people review them, check you for typos, click on any links to make sure they work. Um, and as a tip, make sure you have a link to your Give, pay, give Big page embedded in your images in your email, because for some reason, I've seen this over years of marketing, doing email marketing, people really like to click on images um, as opposed to links that are embedded in the email or the CTA button. So just make sure that all of the images that you have have, have a hyperlink because for some reason people are just more likely to click on those than any other links. Um, check your emails on a couple of different devices and different browsers to make sure that they look how you want them to look um, because sometimes as I mentioned above uh, or earlier um, an email will look great in Chrome and look kind of weird in Internet Explorer so just test them out and if you need help you can always recruit volunteers to help you check emails and test links and do that kind of work for you. So it doesn't have to all be on your you and your staff. You can always get some emails involved because that's a really easy way for volunteers to get involved um, remotely and it doesn't take much time for them to do. Um, and finally, on the email front, uh, make sure you have a clear call to action or CTA. Um, that means it's not only a button, but your CTA and what you would like people to do, what action you would like them to take is evident from your subject line, the headline that you use, and the graphics that you use. Um, 
make sure you have a working link to the page. That's your Mighty Cause page on the Give Big site where you want people to make a donation and use clear, urgent language like give now or donate now. Um, sometimes nonprofits can be a little bit shy with their CTAs and say things like thank you for your donation, but data shows that simple CTAs work best and it works best when there's some urgency behind them saying thank you for your donation before someone's made a donation is not really a great cta but something like donate now it's urgent it's quick and easy to read it's simple and if you have a working link behind that cta button that's sure to get a couple of clicks um, so make sure that you are intentional and thoughtful about the calls to action you use in your emails all right, so another important avenue you have to reach people um, and an important part of a social media of a giving day strategy is social media. Um, my advice to you is to focus on wherever you have the biggest audience. So if you have a good sized Facebook page um, that only have a handful of followers on Twitter, don't bother live tweeting on April 30th. That doesn't mean that you know you, you should ignore other platforms, but spend the most time and invest the most effort where you have the most people watching. Um, I recommend scheduling your key posts, um, which you can do through pretty much all of the services. Instagram's a little bit funky and doesn't like to let people um, schedule things ahead of time. Um, but on Facebook and Twitter and most of the major platforms, you can schedule ahead of time. Um, and that allows you to leave um, any time that you have for live posting for updates on how much you've raised, um, time sensitive updates throughout the day. Like if you're really close to a milestone or a, your fundraising goal, save that kind of thing for live posting and all of your, your key content, any videos, graphics, stories you want to share on social media, schedule all of that ahead of time. Um, and save your energy for interacting with your followers, um, responding to comments, responding to direct messages, and so on. Um, you know, just be available to your supporters, be involved on social media, respond to people. If they say, hey, I made a donation, thank them on social media. And you can also involve volunteers in that. Um, a lot of volunteers have social media experience and they're happy to jump in and say thank you and answer questions that they may have. So if you need, a, if you're a small operation, and you need some help with that, you can certainly loop in some volunteers to help you with social media on the day of, especially if you're gonna be super busy. Um, it can also be really helpful, especially on Facebook, to budget a little bit of money to boost your key posts. Um, and when I say spend money, I really don't mean much. I mean, $15 can do a lot for your reach on Facebook, um, and it can help you be seen by more people. Um, and if you're not too familiar with Facebook targeting, if it's not something that you use very often, I recommend with sticking um, your to boosting your post to your followers, which is one of the options you can choose. Um, and the reason for that is that sometimes Facebook's algorithm um, means people who like your page may not see your post on the day you post it. They may see it a few days afterward, um, or they may not even see the post at all, um, just because that's the way Facebook is working. It's not chronological. It's been that way for quite a long time. Um, but paying a little bit to boost a post to the right people will ensure that your post with your key content gets in front of the right people at the right time when you're looking to collect donations for Give Big St. Croix Valley. Um, I definitely recommend focusing on algorithm friendly content. Um, that is to say that Facebook and Twitter, they all have algorithms and those algorithms tend to prefer certain types of content. Um, we see that they get more engagement overall um, and that includes video and photos. Um, empirically, these just get more engagement than just text posts. That means click, that clicks, that means comments, that means likes, retweets, all of that is included under the umbrella of engagement. Um, so definitely, uh, Work on getting some assets together for social media, whether that's a video you wanna share or images you wanna share. Um, that'll be a huge help on social media. And these can also pull double duty because you can share them on Mighty Cause and in emails as well. Um, so now that we're you know a little over a month out from the event, it's a great time to start pulling those assets together and start getting ready to post them on social media so that you have them in the hopper and they're ready to go on the day of. And just like with email, um, you want to make sure you include a strong CTA um, 
on social media as well. Sometimes we can forget about that on social media, but once you've told this great story or shared this awesome video, um, you know, people want to know what to do. So you need to say, hey, go here and make a donation and obviously include a link on Facebook, on Twitter, everywhere. Um, if you post the most amazing story in the world and the most amazing video, but you forget the link to donate, um, then you've probably lost some donors. So be really careful about making sure that it's clear from your post where people are supposed to go to make a donation. All right, so one thing that's really important to consider, especially if you've done Give Big St. Croix Valley in previous years, is donor retention. Um, people who've donated to your Give Big campaigns in the past are low-hanging fruit, um, so it's a mistake not to try to bring these people back. Um, you can download a list of your previous donors on your donation report on Mighty Cause. Um, we recommend doing some outreach to these donors in particular, um, sending them some dedicated emails that acknowledges that they've supported you for Give Big St. Croix Valley in the past um, with messaging like we know we can count on your support again this year. Um, and this is a, an area where email segmentation really comes in handy. Um, you can just make quick tweaks to your emails that are going out to everybody else in your email list that just acknowledges that they've supported you in the past and you're looking to them to support you again this year. Um, in addition to retaining these donors, um, you'll want to aim to get their donation a little bit higher. You want to bump them up to the next level. So if someone has donated $50 to your nonprofit for two years in a row, um, why not send them a personal email and say, hey, you've been a great supporter of ours. I see that you give, you've given us $50 for previous St. Croix Valley giving days. Um, why can you give us 75 this year? I mean, you know, finesse it a little bit more than that, but reach out to them and ask them to make a donation and try to bump them up a little bit. Um, we also recommend tracking this on the big day, um, which again, you can use your donation report for. Um, so if you're falling a little bit short of your goal or if you're trying to get to a milestone for fundraising, you can pull together pretty easily a last minute email to your previous year supporters who have yet to donate this year. Um, and that can be the big thing that pushes you toward that milestone, toward that goal. So. Get, pull that list, get it out of Mighty Cause, and know who those donors are and keep track of whether you retain them this year so that if you need to have a last minute effort to get yourself to where you want to be in terms of fundraising, you have them ready and you can communicate with them easily. Um, so donor acquisition is as we discussed, a really big part of giving events. Um, but donor retention is, is a key part of how nonprofits who participate in giving events year after year can make those events successful and make them a, a you know, a cornerstone of their fundraising calendar. Um, so it's important to pay attention to it, especially if you've given, if you've participated in Give Big in past years. All right, so one last note on campaign strategy is to follow up because it is not over when you've got someone's donation. That is the beginning of the stewarding process. So make sure you've got a plan in place for a prompt and personal thank you. Um, Mighty Cause does take care of sending out receipts to donors. Donors will get those receipts um, as soon as they complete their donation on the platform. Um, but there's a few things you can do as well to, you know, thank them personally and make sure that those donors have been properly acknowledged. Um, you do have a thank you page that's in your donor experience. They'll see that as soon as they're finished making their, your, their donation, you can put a message there from your nonprofit. You can put a thank you video there. Um, and we also recommend, especially for people who give in bigger amounts, sending out a quick email saying, hey, thank you for your donation, just from somebody real, that's something that's not automated. Um, one thing that you can also do, you can choose to collect a phone number in your donor experience, um, and you can set that so that you're getting phone numbers from people um, making phone calls um, can seem kind of old fashioned, but it is a really nice, lovely touch to have someone call you after you make a donation and say, thank you so much for supporting us and talking to them and building that personal relationship. That is what the stewarding process is all about. Um, so you can you know, choose to collect phone numbers. You can even get volunteers to make those calls for you. Um, I donated to a nonprofit for a giving day that I was managing um, at the end of last year and within the 
hour, I got a really friendly phone call from a volunteer just thanking me for my donation. And it was such a nice touch. So think about, you know, what you can do at your nonprofit based on your capacity, how many people you have working on this event um, to do just a personal follow up to, you know, make sure that these donors feel thanked and feel special. Um, data shows that not only the promptness with which you thank them, but how how well you thank them uh, plays a huge role in whether or not people choose to come back and support your nonprofit. So definitely as you're putting your campaign strategy together, definitely think about you know, how you're going to follow up. Um, and when it's over, just make sure you follow up with everybody as a whole, not just to thank them, but to share your results and show the impact of their support on Give Big St. Croix Valley. Um, pay special attention to first time donors and make sure you get them into your donor pipeline. Um, that can mean sending them a welcome packet in the mail or a welcome series of emails so that they can learn more about your nonprofit. But the important thing is that you don't lose contact with them after Give Big St. Croix Valley, um, because that's unfortunately one of the things that can happen. Um, nonprofits across the sector lose about half of the donors that they acquire. Um, so you really want to make sure that when you get these new donors for Give Big St. Croix Valley, you're making good use of them. You're putting them in the pipeline. You're building a relationship with them and you're staying in contact with them so that they're not just hearing from you next year when you participate in the giving day. They're hearing from you on a regular basis and building a relationship with you. Um, and that's true of all of your donors. You'll just want to stay in touch. And especially if you were fundraising for something in particular, like if you had a fundraiser going for a new roof for your building or you're starting a new program, send updates to the people who donated to help you out during the year and just let you know, let them know like what you're up to, what you're doing and what they've helped accomplish or helped your nonprofit accomplish and just continue stewarding those donors. It's a year round ongoing process um, and definitely you know you don't want to think of the end of the event as the end of your communications with these donors you want to have a plan to follow up so that you know you can retain these donors you can get them to come back to support you time and time again and really make that giving day experience worth it for you as a nonprofit okay and now we're going to shift gears totally and talk about prizes for give big st croix valley there are two leaderboards for Give Big St. Croix Valley, um, and that's where all of the participants are ranked. So if your nonprofit is participating, you will be on both of these leaderboards. Um, Give Big has a most unique donors leaderboard and a most dollars raised leaderboard, um, which how, where, how everybody is ranked on those leaderboards is slightly self-explanatory. Um, on the leaderboard, you'll see all donations made from March 1st on. Um, March 1st is when donations open through the end of the event. Um, after, after the event, the leaderboards themselves kind of freeze, um, so you won't see those amounts go up. It just includes every donation that was made during the duration of the event from when early donations open until the event concluded. Um, <clears throat> one thing to note is that the leaderboard total does not include offline donations um, because our system has no way of verifying offline donations. Um, and it also does not include matching grants unless the, ca the case was that your grantor fulfilled that match online by making a donation through the uh, Give Big site. So your leaderboard totals are just the amount that you've raised in online donations, um, but this is really where the competition is on the giving day. Um, these leaderboards are searchable, so if you aren't sure where you are on the leaderboard, you can just click the search icon, which is that little magnifying glass, and search for your nonprofit's name, and you can see which place you're in. Um, there is a prize for the people who have the most unique donors, um, so that's an important leaderboard to keep an eye on. The, the top seven on this leaderboard will qualify for a prize grant. Um, as for what a unique donor is, that is one person. Um, so if you have one person making seven donations throughout the day, that does not count as seven donors, that counts as one person. That's one donor. Um, this competition has started, it is underway, it includes all of the pre-event donations, um, so it's anyone game at this point um, so you can stack the deck in your favor and get a jump start by um, getting those early donations you can start the day with uh, a bunch of unique donors already in the bag and rank on that leaderboard so that would be an action item if you've already got your page set up is to start getting those unique donors and climb up that leaderboard and um, oh, sorry I lost my place <laughs> Um, the next way you can win are golden tickets. 
And golden tickets are hourly prizes. They are $100 prizes, um, and they are randomly awarded. So every hour, um, at least one nonprofit will win an extra $100 prize. And basically how these work is that any nonprofit that receives a donation during the hour that is, they're, they're eligible for a golden ticket. Um, and the more donations you have, the more likely it is that you will win. If you think about it like a raffle, if you purchase multiple raffle tickets, you're increasing the odds that you'll win each time you purchase a ticket. Except in this case, the tickets are donations. So to win golden tickets, you'll just want to drive donations every hour of the event. And again, these are worth $100 each. You can win multiples. Um, and basically how this works is if there's a 9 a.m. golden ticket being pulled, meaning that that golden ticket is pulled at 9 a.m., all of the donations made from 8 a.m. to the very last second of the eight o'clock hour will be eligible for a golden ticket. Um, so just to clarify, they are limited to the hour. Um, so donations made before the event starts do not count toward golden tickets. Offline donations do not count toward golden tickets. Matching grants don't count toward golden tickets unless you have your donor, your grantor make that grant online. Um, so like I said, it's an hourly opportunity to win. It's really an equal opportunity for every nonprofit to win because if you're behind and you're not ranking high on the leaderboard, if you have a donation or two come in during an hour, you have an opportunity to win a golden ticket. So in a way, it kind of evens the playing field by having this on an hourly basis. And you'll be able to see who's won a golden ticket with a little table that will be on the live event site. You can see that on the, the slide here. And it'll also show on the leaderboard, you'll have a ticket next to your a nonprofit's name that indicates that you won a golden ticket. And the cool thing that is uh, that happens with golden tickets is that it's associated with a donor. So um, as you can see on the random hourly prizes, chart on the slide, Tanya Franta um, donated to an organization. Her donation was the winning donation um, and she helped the nonprofit raise $100 um, in prizes. So the nonprofit could go to Tanya and be like, hey, you helped us raise, win a golden ticket, thank you so much. And it creates this great interaction with the donor. Um, obviously that will not be there if the donor has chosen to remain anonymous, you'll just see the name anonymous under donor and you won't be able to contact them. Um, but that is a really cool way you can, uh, you know, interact with your supporters on the giving day is if they help you win a golden ticket, reach out and say thank you and let them know that their donation had a $100 boost added to it because they helped you win that prize. Um, and just to let you know, we do have a fallback in place in case there are any hours where there are no winners um, because there's no donations. Um, so if there are any overnight or morning hours with no winners, we'll push through an additional winner for each hour at 11 a.m. And at the same thing, if there are no if there are any hours throughout the day in the evening with no winners, we'll push through additional tickets at 11 p.m. Um, we're going to have a schedule of golden tickets put on the rules and prizes page on the Give Big site. So when that's ready, um, you'll most likely get an email about that letting you know, um, because some of the, the hours may have two or three golden tickets awarded. So there will be a schedule that you will have access to. Um, but for Give Big St. Croix Valley, there will be at least one every hour of the event. So there will be at least 24 golden tickets and most likely quite a bit more. Um, so we'll have that schedule posted for you. Um, and in the events that there's no winners, we'll have an additional we'll have additional winners for however many hours were missed at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. Um, we did not have to do that last year. I'm happy to say that uh, there were donations every single hour of the event. Um, but that's also something you can think about a little bit as you're um, thinking about your strategy is, you know, who's making donations at 3 a.m.? Um, if you, you know, play your cards right and do some outreach, that could be you. And so since there's a smaller pool of people who are making donations in those wee hours of the morning, you can, you know, sort of put yourself in a better position to win a golden ticket um, by having people donate during those overnight hours or, you know, d you know, making your staff aware that if they donate late at night, they can help you. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do to strategically win these, even though they are random. Um, but that's how golden tickets work. Um, and again, there will be a full schedule of these and how many will be awarded during each hour on the Give Big site soon. Um, so you'll get a notification when that goes out and that will help you understand how when you can 
get golden tickets. Obviously, if there's more than one being awarded, um, you want to go hard that hour and get as many donations as you can during that hour so you can increase your, your chances of winning. All right, so that is all I've got for now. Um, Sarah, if you would like to unmute yourself, um, we can start taking questions. Um, so if you have a question about anything um, that we've gone over in this presentation, um, just type it into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, because um, we're gonna we're gonna make plenty of time to answer everybody's questions. And we've got one here, um, somebody who missed the beginning of the webinar, and just as a note, um, this will be posted on the Give Big site under the nonprofit toolkit as soon as um, as soon as we're done, and I can post the recording basically. So if you missed a piece, you can certainly check back on in the nonprofit toolkit. Um, okay, this person asked on the Give Big website, is each organization expected to start a fundraiser or create a fundraising event? Or is it automatically added to our page if we registered for Give Big? Okay, so every nonprofit, um, with the exception of a few that maybe don't have their own 501c3 or are very new 501c3 organizations, has a page for their organization on Mighty Cause. Um, so you don't need to start a fundraiser, you don't need to create a fundraising event. Um, you, what you want to do is create a Mighty Cause account. If it's your first time, uh, you know, using Mighty Cause on the, on the or the Give Big platform, so you will need a an account with Mighty Cause in order to sign up for the event. That's one thing that you will have to do, and then you just have to register. Um, your nonprofit will already have a page um, that's associated with your your EIN, um, your nonprofit status, and then you'll just have to go in and customize that page. So you don't need to create a fundraiser, you don't need to create a fundraising event, you just need to sign up for a Mighty Cause account, um, and you'll do that on the upper right hand corner of the page if you're, you know, you don't currently have an account. And when you log in, you can search for your organization's page in the registration form so that you can easily find um, your nonprofit. If you're not finding them there, or if you have a unique situation where you have a fiscal sponsor, um, just let me contact Sarah or contact me. My email is Linda at MightyCause.com. You can also contact support. There's a, a link there that you'll need to click to give us the information about, you know, what your situation is. If you have a fiscal sponsor, we just need documentation in place, but we can add you. But it should be pretty simple for the average nonprofit to get signed up. Um, I would say all of those prompts to start a fundraiser, create a fundraising event, ignore those for now, um, unless you are intentionally looking to create a fundraising event within this giving event, you don't need to click any of those. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, you don't need to create an event or um, create a fundraiser unless you want to. Um, yes, I will send Sarah a copy of the slide deck so that you can uh, she can distribute that to you guys. Um, but yeah, we'll send out um, the slide deck and you'll also have access to the recording on the toolkit. Um, let's see. And Sarah, are you on? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. It can looks like me? most, yeah, I can hear you. I just, I <laughs> kind of plowed right into the questions without saying hello. <laughs> That's okay. Um, all right. Most of these are, are technical questions though, but I did want to, you know, keep you there in case you have any tips or if one of them is event related. That's kind of outside of my, my wheelhouse. Um, yep. So let's see, this one is about the mobile friendly website um, and how to make sure that your emails are mobile friendly. Um, is it easy to make sure that they are mobile friendly? In most cases, if you're using something like Constant Contact or MailChimp or Campaign Monitor, whatever email marketing service you use, um, you, there's, you can tell when you choose a template that it's mobile friendly. Um, and it'll usually have an icon or, it, you know, some of them may have all mobile friendly templates, but some things that can really go a little wonky on mobile are newsletter formats with lots of little boxes next to each other. Because what happens when you take an email that's got, you know, a newsletter format where you've got lots of boxes next to each other, a, a smartphone browser takes those and stacks them. So if you have, you know, five or six 
different columns that you've you've written into your email or however many columns you have or side by side boxes those are all going to be stacked and that can look really funky in an email and be hard to read and it makes it harder for people to get to the bottom of the email or wherever your CTA is so um, check with you know there, there's probably support archi archives where you can find out you know exactly how to tell if an email is mobile friendly um, you know, in whatever program you use, whether it's Constant Contact, MailChimp, or any of the other multiple <laughs> email uh, marketing programs there are. Um, and the other thing is test them. Um, so send an email to, test email to yourself um, to, you know, see, and open it up on your phone, open it up on a tablet, open it up in a different browser. That's kind of the testing I was talking about to make sure that, you know, Everything looks good from device to device um, because most people do check their email from their phone. I know I do. Um, so just pull it up on your phone, send it to your personal email address and, and check it out on your phone. If you're a Droid user and somebody else in the office has an iPhone, send it to them, see how it looks. Um, just as you're testing them out, especially with these key emails. Um, now this is only with you know email marketing software. If you are super small and you're you know personally sending you know things to contacts in Gmail and you're not using something like Constant Contact, then that doesn't really apply. Um, but if you're using uh, an email marketing program like Constant Contact or Mailchimp, you should easily be able to tell if it's mobile friendly um, either by looking at the template you're choosing or by testing it. Um, and just keep in mind that anything that is side by side on a uh, in, in an email is going to stack on mobile um, so lots of things next to each other is generally a recipe for disaster with um, mobile emails um, but yeah I mean if you um, you know want to reach out to me I'm happy to help you if you let me know what um, email service you're using um, I'm happy to you know point you in the right direction all right so someone has a question about what is a unique donor um, so a unique donor is just one person so um, if you make 20 donations to your own nonprofit on, you know, give big, you are one donor, you are one unique donor. So, um, that's basically the gist of it is, you know, people, you know, trying to donate multiple times, um, they, that's, they're one person, they're one unique donor. So you can, you have two ways you're being ranked. One is by the volume of donations you bring that you bring in or the amount of donations you bring in, in which case having people donate multiple times, especially when it comes for golden tickets, um, that can be really helpful and useful. It will not affect the unique donor count because it's the number of individuals who donate. So it's just a, a unique person. I'm an individual. I donated 20 times, but I'm one person. So um, in terms of how that looks on the back end, I unfortunately can't get into that. Um, but basically one person equals one unique donor. Um, and that's how that works. So, um, you know, if we do take a look at things that happen throughout the day. You know, if somebody is creating lots of multiple accounts that can sometimes be considered cheating. So generally one person is one unique donor, um, you know, and that's that's how to, especially because there's prize money behind this, you know, unique donors just counts how many donors you're able to bring in, and the purpose of that, um, as Sarah, as I'm sure, can attest, is to to you know help you guys grow and get more donors. Um, that's really the mission of Give Big St. Croix Valley is to, to help out nonprofits. Um, so one person equals one unique donor. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Sarah, do you have any anything to add? on the unique donor situation? No, nope. nope, that's, that's okay. what I've been um, communicating as well, so. Okay, cool, yeah, it's just one person, um, and we do see a list of who donates what, so definitely um, finding creative ways to make one person count as 30 people, we do tend to pick up on that. Um, you know, I'm able to see that during the day, um, but generally just, you know, one person is one unique donor, and that's um, that's the end of that story, I think. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, another question. Um, I'm sorry, did you say we will have access to listen to this webinar again? Yes, um, so that once I'm done with the webinar and I've uploaded it to YouTube, we'll put it on the Give Big site. So you just go to resources 
an NPO tool, toolkit and you'll be able to access it there. You can fast forward some of the talking I did that maybe wasn't so interesting um, or go back to the question and answer section if that's what you want to do or just share it with people. Um, but yeah, you're going to have access to the recording. We'll post it on the Give Big site. Um, probably I would say no later than tomorrow. Um, YouTube's a little slow, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so we'll have this available to you. And Sarah, I will send you the slide deck if you want to send that out in an email to everybody. All right, um, so there's another one. Can I enter cash and check donations for Give Big? Yes, um, you can enter them as offline donations. Um, and they will be added to the total on your page. The one thing I do want to make clear, though, is because this is an online giving marathon, they don't count for the total amount raised for the event, and they will not show on your leaderboard. Um, so sometimes if you know you you look at the, your nonprofit on the leaderboard on the day of, and you're like, hey, there's a there's a discrepancy. In most cases, that is an offline donation. So um, certainly if you receive cash or check donations, you can enter them um, on your site so that they're reflected in the total amount that you've raised and the, the fundraising that you've done. They just won't appear on the leaderboard um, and they do not count toward prizes. And that is really just to keep the playing field fair um, because we can't verify that an offline donation was actually received if somebody wants to enter in a $300 donation and you know bump up their amount we have no way of verifying that so just as a general rule they are not counted um, but definitely if you want to reflect the the full spectrum of all the fundraising you did you can enter them as offline donations that is in your donation section on your dashboard where you'll find your donations report um, it's just right there. You just say add an offline donation and enter in the donor's information, and then it'll add that to your total. Um, but yeah, they you can add it. You can have it reflected in your organization's total. It just won't show on the leaderboard, and it does, is not eligible for prizes. All right. Oh, this is a good one for Sarah. Um, are offline donors able to drop at specific Give Big locations again? I'm not fully sure what that, that means, but you might know. <laughs> yep, yes, we we will be having um, some drop-off locations in the communities. Um, we're working with a couple of the sponsor banks that have agreed to be that location. Um, that being said, if there is a nonprofit um, that, you know, if you have volunteers or something that would like to set up um, a location in a list, a local coffee shop or a restaurant or the library or something like that. Um, and you want to let your um, people know that, that that's where you'll be on that day. Um, that would be fine too. But I'll be communicating as soon as we know um, time frames and which banks um, and in which communities, I will communicate that in an email. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and then the follow-up question to that was, when do those get added to our page? Those so would be, um, oh, no, yeah, sorry. we would, sorry. Um, my understanding mm -hmm. is those get then mailed to the nonprofit um, unless, um, we would be after the fact because they would be, um, we're getting them on the day of. So unless the nonprofit wants to come and pick them up, if they are received, let's say we get a check for an Amory nonprofit and it's, um, at the Amory location, and they could certainly come and pick up the check at that location on that day. Um, but I'm not 100% sure on how that was handled last year um, being new. So I apologize. I can get that answer as well and communicate that when I send out the slides. Okay, cool. Um, there's a few more questions. Um, one is a question about matching grants. Um, do I have to collect the matching do grant donation on the Give Big site? Um, the answer to that is no. Um, you can collect it however you want with your donor. Um, the thing to keep in mind about that, of course, is that if they give you a cash or a check, it's not counted toward prizes. Um, so it's not counted on the leaderboard and it's not counted um, for golden tickets. So you can certainly log it on, uh, you know, obviously with a large donation, a lot of people prefer to write checks or send you the money in some other fashion. So they don't have to make the donation online. That's totally up to you and your relationship with the, the person who's providing the grant. 
um, they can make the donation online. So if you, you know, got a $500 matching grant from them and you were able to raise $500 and they, they can fulfill that online. Um, so they can, they'll get an email. If you've entered in their email address, that'll send them an email saying, Hey, this has been fulfilled. Go here to, you know, make your, your donation. They can ignore that if you've already got a check coming in from that or if you've already collected the check um, but they you know they can do either or depending on their preferences so um, there's you're not locked into anything there um, the only thing I will say is that if your donor would like to fulfill the match online then you do not want to count it um, in your and basically you have the option of auto calculating so when somebody donates twenty dollars if you have a match in place it'll say forty dollars in your total if you have the donor making that um, donation online that would result in it being counted twice it's not the end of the world we can definitely correct it after the fact if like you know there was some breakdown in communication and they donated online and you were thinking they were going to give you a check it's not a big deal we can help you out at support um but you know that's the only caveat i would put to that if you have it coming in online and you've already come to that agreement um, then don't auto calculate it um, with each donation um, basically it'll add an offline donation for each donation that gets you to the amount of the match if that makes any sense whatsoever um, but yeah if you need any help with that you can always contact us at support at ladycause.com but you can do whatever you want with your grantors um, we don't lock you into anything and one last question, I know it's a little bit after uh, time right now, um, but there's a great question to end on, which is where can I go if I need help with my page? Um, the answer is go, you can come to Sarah, um, but typically you wanna go to support at ladycause.com, particularly if it's a technical issue, a, an issue with a donation, a question about your page, um, we have support staff available to you. Um, so that's support at ladycause.com. Often email is easier. We do have a phone number if you would like to call us, um, but email is a lot easier because you can sort of tell us what the situation is. We can look at it um, on our end. It's a little bit harder to get things like email addresses correct over the phone. Um, so support at mightycause.com is your friend. Uh, make sure that you have that address in your, um, in your contact list, in your email. Um, and just as another note, um, so as part of the, the giving day, and how it works, um, we provide support to your donors as well. So on the day of, if you get questions from donors that are like, you know, oh gosh, I'm getting this message when I'm trying to make a donation, or did my donation go through twice, or whatever, you know, questions your donor have has, you can send them to support as well, and we can look at it and make sure that they are able to successfully process their donation. Um, so yeah, support at mightycause.com. We're your friends. We're here to help you. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out to us. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for now. If you guys have any other questions, especially related to um, giving day strategy, you can always email me. I'm available to you. Um, my email is lynda at mightycause.com. That's lynda with an I at mightycause.com. And uh, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you everybody who attended. Thank you, Linda. Absolutely. Have a great day and enjoy the first day of spring, guys. <laughs>